And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, My servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into the outer darkness. There will be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Then when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Amen. This is the prophetic word of God. This is the truth. This is the true word of God. That Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ is destined by God among all the many for examine to, to make judgment, to save, to teach to lead among the many and innumerable characteristics that he has he also has this one this blessed word of God he has borne our infirmities on the cross of Calvary and our sicknesses as well as he was crucified not only for our iniquities and our sins not only so that we may have peace before Him, but also with His wounds. It was written that we have been healed and that's why He was crucified. He shed His blood and for our illnesses and for our sicknesses. He is the only one who is able to give perfect health and perfect healing. He is the only one who has given us his name, as there is no other name given between heaven and earth by which we ought to be saved. And he is the one for which Peter and John said to the paralytic, born paralytic, I have no gold or silver to give you, but what we do have, this we give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And this did happen. But today, my dear brethren, with details, the Word of God describes to us regarding the healing and not only. Healing is something that God does with great joy that He has appointed to Jesus Christ for Him to do. But this is not the end of the whole story. I would dare say that it is just the beginning for His glory. So as he gone, had gone up to the mountain, many followed him. 
And there he preached the famous Sermon on the Mount. The things that he told them weren't satisfying. They were, they were root breaking. That is, he canceled anything they knew up to that point. He made void anything they knew, but also his words were also harsh. To the point that at some time the disciples came and said, the Pharisees have heard your words so harsh and they are gone, they left. And he didn't tell them, run, go and grab them so we can quiet them as we would do today. God forbid that we do such a thing. But he told them, do you also want to go? And Peter said, God forbid that we go, Lord. You have words. To whom shall we go? Only you have words of everlasting life. We go to Christ only because he has words of everlasting life. Not because he, he does us favors, but you have words of everlasting life. So having come down from the mountain, and all who heard, the multitude, they went because they had a special drawing. His word, even though it was harsh, many times, a special drawing that is none other than the love of God the Father as it is written that I have loved you with everlasting love and I've drawn you near with mercy. The love of God the Father is that which draws us and the love of God the Father is that which fixes our heart, opens it up so that we may take heed to the words of Christ. And the love of God is the one that opens our mind as well so that we may understand the scriptures. So all those who listened understood that this man is speaking with authority. And the authority is not found in man unless it's given from above. John said nobody has anything unless God has given it to him. And when he came down, the multitudes followed him. And a leper who was uh, suffering, leprosy was a terrifying illness. And it is, only that now it can be healed. But it was a terrifying illness. It, it devours the whole body. It's painful, appalling, and in the end, deadly. But also very contagious. So that nobody could not only touch, but not even draw near to a leper, but also the leper didn't dare to draw near because he was stoned by the healthy. But some leper found the courage in him. He came to Jesus, he worshipped before him, and he told him, Lord, he had faith that God could heal him. He said, Lord, I know that you can heal me. You can make me clean. If you're willing, make me clean. It is the way of his personal healing. I know that he can. I believe that he can. I believe that he is willing, so I go to him so he can heal me. I would dare say, an easy way, even though it's impossible, if man thinks in human terms. Only by faith is the human impossibility turned into something possible and plausible for man because God is able to do all things. And the Lord, what the Lord told him was, be careful, don't say this to anyone. This is a personal matter between me and you. But become a doer of the law. Go to the priest. Show that you are healthy now. As a testimony to them. I heal you. So that you may become a live witness to the priests who know that leprosy cannot be healed. That God is able. But after that. He went to Capernaum and then there's something very significant happened. A centurion, a Roman, a mighty man of that time, had a servant. 
the, the, the ancient Greek text says, a, a, a lad, a beloved servant that is, who was tormented dreadfully as he was paralyzed at home. Now here is the secret how Christ heals the others for which we pray. Christ doesn't want us to pray only for ourselves, or rather, more, He'd like us to pray for others. But so that our prayer may be resultful, as also so that our prayer may be resultful for ourselves, it must have faith, and the ability, and in the love of Christ. So also, so that the prayer might be resultful on others, it must have love, faith, but as we will see later on, humility as well. And something even more, humility that depends on the rightly dividing of the Word of God. So he approaches him. He pleads with him and he tells him, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And the Lord immediately answered and said, I will come and heal him. Christ cannot resist the love when somebody loves even the person that he ought to not love because he was a servant. He could have another hundred servants. No matter if he dies, he'll get another hundred. But he loved this one so much. God cannot act unless you love. The one that you pray for or unless you love in general. Of course, we accept the Word of God as the Word of God that it is. And the Word of God works among those who believe. But there where it, the Word of God has very nice results is when faith is through love, through working love. Not with pity. Oh, the poor man, I pity him. I have nothing to give him, so I'll give him. No, not such love. This love doesn't please God. Love is the one that the good Samaritan had. Who had compassion. And this love has good results. It has a beginning, a continuance, a continuance and then an end. Christ has loved us until the end. And this is the love that God wants us to love with until the end. Now we see him, we pity him, and we run away. Or we have compassion on him, we give him 5, 10 euro, 1 euro, 100 euro maybe. But that's it. No, this isn't the love of God. The love of God is poured into our hearts only by the Holy Spirit. And there is always, it is always there. Especially in those of our same faith, our brethren. So when... Our Lord Jesus Christ responded immediately. Then the centurion revealed the other beautiful characteristics that he has. He knew that it is not forgiven for a Jew to enter the house of a Gentile. And he had this beautiful spirit. He didn't want to bring him into a difficult position. He didn't want to bring him into transgression possibly. So how did he deal with this? With humility. He said, Lord, and he asked, Lord, make us so. This is a useful Christian. Otherwise, we are useless, my brethren. Completely useless. We say words, 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 and nothing. God does nothing. We do things, but God doesn't do anything. God doesn't cooperate with us. And we do not want to do things. We want Christ to do things. Because that is how God is glorified. We want God to be glorified and not man. May God be glorified and man to hide. He said, Lord, I am not worthy. He puts humility before him. I'm not worthy. He could tell him, it's not necessary for you to come, Lord. Besides, I mean, you're, you're, you're busy. Just speak a word. That would have been good too. But he said what was perfect in the eyes of God. He said, Lord, I am not worthy that you may enter my house. But I know very well that you have authority 
I know it. I believe it. I can see it. You healed the leper. You have authority. And the one who has authority doesn't need to be present. So long as he speaks the word. Humility, but also wisdom. Because I'm also under authority. When they command me something, I do it. But I also have servants under my authority. I tell them, go do this, and he does it. Come here, and he comes. And to my soldier, I say, do this, and they do it. You are the Lord. You have authority. So speak a word, and it will happen. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ marveled. His humility, his love, and especially his faith. He marveled his faith that the word of Christ has power. He marveled. He had marveled in another way, another time. And this time he marveled at the lack of faith of his fellow countrymen. Who because of their unbelief, he could perform no miracle there. He marveled because of their faith. And he found the chance to say things regarding the future. The time will come when up there in heaven along with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob there will be people who will come from the east, west and, and south and north. But they will be sons of the kingdom. No, but the sons of the kingdoms will be left out. This was for the Israelis back then. But this is also for every chronological period during that time if he is the son of the kingdom. Whoever is the son of the king of the kingdom. And they've they've they think that they are the great ones because God has had compassion on them once. But let us say it more correctly. My brethren, let us be never believe that we are something. Because God had compassion on us. Because God gave us mercy. Because God helped us. This is the grace of God. And grace is not a result of a work. It is of a human work. But it is a result of the love of God. We are wretched. We are vile. We are nothing. We stumble in many things. We can do nothing without Jesus. And we thank God for our past, for our testimony. But we also humble ourselves and pray to God for our present and for our good future. For our future. That we may have a good future, my brethren. And the Lord answered the centurion. And he told him, the way that you believe, as you have said, let it be done. He told them, in other words, the word that you believe that has power. And because you believe that my word has power, and you draw near to me with humility, with love, I say to you that now your word has power. As you believe, let it be done. God transfers the power of the word of God into the power of the word of man. And that is why the Apostle Paul says to us, let everyone speak as if he's speaking the words of God. I remember every time, sometimes when I prayed, I said, I hear the voice of God saying, be careful what you say. I can hear you. Let us be careful what we say, my brethren. Because God wants to change your word, O oh man who is wretched and vile, to the word of the Almighty God. But be careful what you say. Out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth, so be careful of what you keep in your heart. He found a beautiful man, the centurion, so that he may teach us how powerful man can become when he understands that he is absolutely weak. As the Apostle Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong. And when my weakness becomes complete, then the power of God is perfect. 
the centurion, the mightiest in that region, appeared to Christ as the least of all. And the mightiest of that region, but the least in the presence of God. Christ changed him into a man of faith and power. And he gave him a word of God into his words, into his mouth, words of God into his mouth, so that the things that he said did take place. This is the second form of healing. The healing of prayer for others. And when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his mother lying sick with a fever. And so he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and served him. The third form of healing by grace to those who have the intention to serve their brethren in Christ. The servant of God that serves humbly has a Christ who is a healer that heals him. What was Peter's mother-in-law? Nothing. She was a woman, forgive me Lord for saying this, a little woman. Like all the rest, she was of, of our age, she was old. Peter must have been what, 30 years old then? His mother-in-law would have been what, his, 60? But she had, he, she had this good intention. She wanted to serve with the whole heart without complaining. The fever came, but Christ also came and healed her. Hallelujah. The illness came, but he who heals all illness and all disease came as well. To whom? To the one who is pleased in serving with whole, his whole heart without complaining, with great love. As the Apostle Paul says, and I really like this, my dear brethren, do all things without complaints and, and thoughts, because then you will be blameless and whole as children of God that are spotless, without groaning and complaining do all things. In the meantime, Time went by and the evening had come. The end of the day had come. And when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed. And he cast out the spirits with the word from all of them. And he healed all who were sick, so that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Now there's no reason for healing except the fact that the night has come, the evening has come. The Apostle Paul says, the evening has come, darkness is at hand, and the end of all is at hand. The only reason now for him to not perform personal healing nor to answer to the love, the humility of somebody, but so that he may heal the centurion. Not even so that he may heal on his own those who have made the decision to serve him. But now it is the appropriate time for him to heal all illness and all disease because it is the end of the end. This is the only reason. All those who came, we don't know if they had faith. We don't know if they had um, uh, humility. We know one thing though, that they came last moment. And at the last moment, Christ heals them all. And we believe that we are reaching the end, my dear brethren. It is the twilight. Soon darkness will come. The authority of darkness will come. The ruler of darkness will come. The day, that day and that night will come when, which will test 
all the inhabitants of the world, of the earth. But a short time be before darkness comes, the twilight will come. And I believe that the twilight has begun. If only I'm right. But if I'm right, and whoever believes this, I say let us stand up and pray so that God may do what the Bible says. He healed all who suffered of infirmities. He cast out all spirits of wickedness. And he glorified his name. But before this, I want to read once again, but let me find this by the grace of Christ, a psalm that I've lately fallen in love with. I hope I can find it. By the grace of Christ, please be a bit patient. God, may God have compassion on us. It is Psalm 67. May God shine His face on us so that it may be known in all the way. And know the Lord, your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among nations. Let the peoples, sorry, the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. He shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us bring a prayer before God from the depths of our heart. Και θα φοβηθούν αυτόν όλα τα πέρατα τη γη. Αμήν. Αλληλούια. Να φέρουμε μια προσευχή μέσα από την καρδιά μα.